Hey guys, I'm Brandon. Welcome back to another Facebook Live uh, here at Flying Miata, or Flying Miata's remote facilities, if you will. Um, I'm going to talk about 3D printers today. So uh, we've we've had these for a little while. Um, we've had a number of questions on them, so I kind of wanted to go through like how how they're different, why we're using them, what we're using them for, um, all that fun stuff. So uh, kind of a brief background. Um, we bought our first 3D printer forever ago. I don't know, long time ago, doesn't matter. Um, but we used it for fitment testing, basically, and prototyping. Um, and these, these are kind of good examples of um, what we used, used it for. Um, and you can kind of see that this is, this is good for fitment, but it's, it's not a real great surface finish. Um, you know, this one as well, it's a little harder to see, but you can see like that's not actually round and that's rough. It shows up a little better on the blue here. Um, so we moved to our Mark Forged printers um, and we got prototypes like this that are perfectly round, lots of really good details. The engraving is on there, really smooth surface finish. So um, that basically means that we can use them as uh, uh, as end use parts, really. So, um, and to back up a minute, sorry, I, I don't do this that often. Uh, if you have questions, as always, drop them in the comments. We'll try to answer them. Um, if we don't get to them, we will answer them in the comments later. So, uh, but we'll get to your questions kind of towards the end. <coughs> so, um, there there are a lot of pros and cons to. 3D printing, um, one of the biggest things for us is that based on our experience with these guys, we wanted to make sure, we wanted to make end use parts, but we wanted to make sure that they were up to our quality standards, um, obviously up to the strength standards as well. So we looked at a number of different printers, um, we evaluated a lot of different things, and long story short, we ended up uh, with the Markforged printers. Um, we've got the Onyx one. They've got a whole range, and these are actually their entry-level printers, um, but they're still phenomenally good. Um, pros and cons to everything, and these are no exception. Um, but the again, the surface finishes and strength is very, very good. So, if you compare the Onyx, which is a carbon fi excuse me, carbon infused nylon material, uh, with the ABS that we were using before, um, the Let's see, the strength, and there are lots of ways to define it, but generally speaking, the strength is one and a half times higher with uh, Onyx than with the ABS. And then the heat deflection point is also one and a half times higher. Now that's uh, very beneficial for us for lots of obvious reasons, but also we can use 3D printed parts under hood uh, because they're not gonna deflect and melt and such uh, like an ABS or a PLA or, <coughs> or whatever else. Uh, is going to. So um, now the cons to the the material anyway, it's very expensive. Uh, it is uh, for, for 3D printer material, it's basically 10 times more expensive than this material. Um, the printers uh, have a smaller print bed, they only have a single extruder, um, there's and there's other things that a lot of other printers have that these don't. Um, but the strength and the reliability and uh, the surface finish are phenomenal and basically make it worth the trade-offs. So, um, I mean, really, kind of case in point, we bought one in January, February maybe, early this year, um, and now we have five of them. Uh, so we obviously are very happy with them. Also, they are running about 24-7 to, to try to keep up with demand and give us a little more uh, capacity so that we can actually move forward and prototype and uh, have new products and all that fun stuff. So um, we can, let me check my notes here. So yeah, I'll go through this stuff real quick. So you can see kind of a selection of parts that we're printing here. Um, this is not everything. I think it may be most of the parts. Um, but it's nice because we can kind of manipulate things. So with with the door bushings, for example, 
Um, we can play with them and add strength where we need it and, and take it away where we don't and, and play with that kind of stuff. So what you can't see in here is that the, the wall thickness, so uh, you can kind of see here, um, the way 3D printing works, you have a wall that goes around there and then you have a mesh. It can be different shapes and different um, densities, fill patterns basically, um, in there. So what we do is kind of maximize that to make it as strong as possible, but also make it print as quickly as possible while maintaining a good surface finish and all that kind of stuff. Um, these, and that's one of the drawbacks with 3D printing is we, to print eight pairs of door bushings, it takes us uh, a day and a half. So it does not move very quickly. Anyway, we're able to maximize uh, the strength by increasing the wall thickness. You can't see that in here, but the, the thickness of the wall uh, is very thick, strong. I'm getting repetitive, uh, but it, it works well. Also, to that point, um, so our Ninja tools, we used to make these out of stainless steel. So they were very thin. They were not that thin, but, but close. So what would happen is that they would get in between the cam gears and they would kind of fold over. Um, they still worked pretty well, uh, but they did make it so that you couldn't loosen the cam bolts with the tool because the tool simply wouldn't stay in place. So we developed our new uh, Ninja tool. It's obviously quite a bit thicker, so you have lots of overlap there. Um, and one of the things that we did have to play with, uh, Travis, if you wanna come over here again, is the fill pattern. So we had to get very, very dense on the fill pattern to make it strong enough because it's like to hold the cam gears in place, no big deal. To hold the cam gears in place while they're being torqued, while you're tightening or loosening the bolts, that's a whole lot of force squishing in. We're actually trying to shear this really. It's trying to rip it like this. So if you compare the density of the fill pattern on these guys to the density of the fill pattern on this, which is just being squished a little bit in, in this direction, uh, straight up out of the bed, uh, then it doesn't need that density. So anyway, we can just play with that kind of stuff uh, to, to maximize everything, really. Um, and yeah, while we've got it open, you can just see the, the quality of the printers. It's just really, really solid construction. It's, it's basically industrial level stuff. It's not not homebrew stuff. Homebrew printers are awesome. Absolutely nothing against them, but for production parts, that's not what you're going to use. So um, we can do stuff. Uh, we basically redesigned our a lot of our tools to make them cheaper, lighter, which is maybe not the most critical thing for a tool, um, but also uh, less likely to ding. You know, if you drop this it's probably not going to get dinged at all, whereas an aluminum tool uh, might get a notch on it and then that could cut a seal and so on and so forth. So, and we can also tweak things, like with the VVT cam seal installer, the, well, the, the really short version is it, this lip around here, the seal actually pops onto this tool and then you push it in, so it just makes the install easier without getting into all the gory details there. So. Um, one of the other nice things about the printer is the level of detail. So if you, I don't know if you can get in there, but the, I mean, just the, the tiny little lip there and that little nub right there and the logo, I mean, it's all really, really precise, clean, and that makes it fit and work really well. This, yeah, it kind of depends on, on your the top of your dipstick anyway, but this is a replacement dipstick handle because they, so many of them break off. Um, this one, if as long as that shoulder uh, at the base of the handle is still intact, this just clicks in solid. You can use glue if you want. It's not a bad idea to add it, but really, really solid. Um, and this is a good example right here of how we're kind of modifying things moving forward. So this is an old bracket that we used to use for um, the solenoid that we use on our hush muffler for the, uh, for the ND. Um, so it's stainless steel, excuse me. Um, it's stainless steel, um, and I mean, that kind of sums it up right there. Uh, we are able to print it 
and by printing it, we can take advantage of all the different abilities of this machine and the fact that it can work in lots of different axes, I guess you could say, uh, with no additional complication. You know, if we were going to machine this, it would be very expensive and would take a long time printing. No big deal. So, but you can see again how we can do detailed stuff. It's kind of hard to see, but there's actually a hex in there. So it retains the nut. Uh, so you just slip the nut in there. That holds it in place. So now instead of trying to hold your wrench on the backside of this, when you've got your Allen wrench on there and kind of manipulating both, you just pop a nut in there, run your Allen wrench down, and you're good to go. Um, we can also modify it so like that's very strong because it has an arc to it and there's, there's depth to it. Um, this, I don't know if I can bend it by hand, uh, but this is not going to be anywhere near strong because it's basically two-dimensional. So, um, And we also have some new products, um, kind of sneak peeks here that uh, hopefully I don't get in trouble for. But um, we are working on these. They should actually be available here shortly. Uh, but these are visor blanking plates. So you take your visor out. And then uh, there's a, an LED in here. And we've got everything so that it uh, connects to the switch uh, for your dome light. And there you go. You have actual light instead of a vague hint of light, like the stock lights. Um, but again, we can print that hex in the back there so everything stays in place nice and easy. Um, and then this is another one, um, very cheap, easy. Uh, this is another one that's, that's upcoming. Um, shouldn't be long. It kind of happens when it happens. Uh, but this is for reroute people. If you have removed the thermostat neck off the front of the engine, um, you now have that hole in the timing belt cover. Uh, this pops in there. Uh, there's also a backing, a backing plate that I don't have right now. But anyway, it pops in there. So. Um, so let me go through some of the questions that we've gotten before. Oh, I left my computer alone too long. So um, we had somebody ask, are we going to do alloy uh, FDM, fused deposition manufacturing? Yeah, sorry. Um, which, is, which is what this is. Um, it is so cool and very, very awesome and very, 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 very expensive. Um, I think it has now come down into these six figures uh, to do that. So it's, I mean, the short version is it's a little out of our price range. The slightly longer version is that is fantastic for making functional prototypes that you can actually bolt on to a car and go run. You know, we could, this, this, is, this prototype is really good for fitment testing. It is not very functional for uh, functional testing because it is not actually watertight. So if we did um, alloy FDM, we could do that, but it's very expensive and it's not great from a manufacturing standpoint because it would take, I, I don't know, it would probably take a day, and I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it would probably take about a day all said and done, uh, at least, to do this one part. Um, now, this is a very, 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 very complex piece to machine, and there was a wild amount of setup on the front end. But now that that's done, it's done in a few hours. Um, and you can just churn them out. Uh, you can't do that with the FDM stuff. Um, so pros and cons. Again, you know, the door bushings are awesome, really strong, like them. We can make them less expensive, um, but they take a long time to print. So. So short version, I would love to. If you can come up with a business case, please let me know. Uh, realistically, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> um, so what to print and what not to print, that's kind of in the same vein. Um, the first question is demand, of course. You know, if we, we will, and I don't blame them, I'm the same way, we will frequently have people say, oh, I want this, a million people will buy it, it's gonna be really, really cool. And yeah, for like five people, it probably will be cool. And you know, the beauty of the 3D printer is it, gets, it gives us a lot more flexibility in terms of trying things because we don't have to commit to a really big order. 
the flip side of that is that you can't just snap your fingers and pop something out of the printer. You have to design it first and you have to make sure it's right. So um, now we are happy to work with people uh, on that. So if you have a design and you're interested in having us produce it, please get in touch. Um, I'm not going to say yes right now. It could be a no, but it could be a yes. So anyway, um, so we have to consider that. Um, some things are really good to print. Some things are not good to print. Um, high volume stuff is usually a little bit challenging to make the case. Um, some stuff requires post-processing basically. Like these guys, for example, um, we, we print them like this so that all of the strands are oriented like this because most of the stress that this has is like this, right? So if we printed it in, in this direction, it would be easier to separate uh, the layers, if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, we print it like that, it works well, but that means that we have to print supports in all of this because the way a 3D printer works, it's basically like an old school dot matrix printer or inkjet or something that has levels. So it, it prints one layer and then it moves up a tiny, tiny, tiny amount and then it prints another layer and so on and so forth. So the layers up above need to be supported. So short version, it, it requires post-processing to take all that material out. So you have to kind of consider what orientation is best. Is it possible to print it with manageable uh, support material? Is the support material gonna make it look really ugly so now it doesn't look quite as nice, um, that kind of thing. And you can kind of see that, you know, this is, this is not, not bad and it's hidden so it doesn't matter, but that surface finish in there is not quite as nice. Now, it sits in there installed like that. You're never going to see that. So that's kind of one of the trade-offs that's, that's worthwhile. So uh, all of that having been said, we are always looking for suggestions. So if you do have ideas, if you have a model um, you would like us to print, whatever, please let us know. Um, we are very, very backlogged and very busy right now. So please bear with us. Um, and we are working on that, by the way. But, uh, but yeah, we are always looking for suggestions. So please let us know. Um, and kind of, kind of, sort of vaguely related, almost 180 degrees from that. Um, we've had some questions. Can I buy your design to print it on my own? That's challenging. Um, the the first thing is, well, I'm sure. You, you're not going to give it to all of your friends, but if it's online, somebody's gonna buy it, put it on some website somewhere, and then it's just out, which is maybe not the end of the world, but you know, something to consider. More importantly, we don't have any control over the quality of it. So maybe our design, and, and actually the dipstick handle's a, a good example of it. Some printers may not be able to build this as accurately, as strongly, um, maybe, you print it out of a different material, and since it's kind of close to the exhaust, it just droops. Well, this material is very good, so it doesn't droop. So the, the kind of the short version there is we don't, have, we don't have any control over the quality of the print, so we don't want people saying, oh, well, this model is terrible. FM doesn't know, have any idea what they're doing because it wasn't produced to our standards on our machine and that type of thing. It, it basically lets us keep the quality uh, more controlled. So, um, I think that is all I have. Travis, we have any questions? No questions? All right. Uh, well, thanks for watching. As always, if you guys think of any questions, uh, put them in the comments. We'll answer them. Um, be sure to, you know, like, comment, follow, subscribe. I don't know all that social media ness um, to make sure you keep up on our stuff. Um, and yeah. Thanks for watching. We will see you next Thursday at two o'clock.